Welcome to ACCA FM webinar for March 2021 and I am your instructor Rizwan Mania and I will be conducting this very good effective webinar and that will definitely help you to boost up your confidence and it will also be really good for you to revise the things. So let's begin. About the tutor, uh, I am this I'm this teaching field since more than 13 years. I deal with paper performance management, financial management, and advanced performance management. Uh, have taught more than 6,000 students. Uh, I deal uh, both physically and in online teaching for the international students. I've conducted five ACCA uh, performance management webinars which ACCA Pakistan uh, conducts every quarter and ACCA six APM webinars. And this is my first ever uh, <coughs> webinar for this financial management paper. But I'm teaching this paper since so many years so have a good amount of experience. Now, how to remain in contact with me uh, after the session? It's the WhatsApp number that you can just note it down. You can send me a quick WhatsApp message and this WhatsApp message uh, will definitely uh, be answered and I'll share you the link of my uh, group if you are not part of my group so if you are part of the group that's fine if you're not part of the group so be uh, part of the group make sure that you send me a quick message on this number and I'll send you the link of the whatsapp and you will be part of this fm uh, group for March 21 where you'll be getting the entire support in relation to this paper okay uh, after that, how to remain connected during the webinar. So it's very simple, friends. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to remain connected, so uh, you have the chat box given here. So just write it down in the chat box. This chat box will be uh, a way to communicate. Uh, a chat box will be a way through which you will give me the feedbacks, okay? Now, the paper structure, uh, I'm sure many of you already know the structure, but still, just to give you a quick idea, your paper is of three hours where you have uh, 1.8 minutes per mark, and the paper is divided into three sections of section A, section B, and section C. 15 objective test questions, OT, we call this as OT, uh, will be tested in section A and having a weightage of two marks each that makes around 30 marks altogether. okay. Section B uh, includes three case style questions. Case style means that uh, it's a scenario with five OTs in that particular scenario and like this there are three questions that will come in your paper having a weightage of 10 marks each so that makes 30 marks from section B. Now this section B uh, these days uh, has become really uh, important and students are really struggling in section B uh, because it's a case study followed by five objective test questions so people are not generally able to link the OTs with the scenario and that's why uh, they are losing easy marks in this case, okay? So uh, this is very important. I'll really focus on this as well. Section C uh, includes two constructive response questions. Uh, two constructive response questions uh, means that you have to use a spreadsheet. You have to use the uh, uh, word processing for the theoretical answers and for the calculations is the spreadsheet okay uh, now as you can see here there are your syllabus has been divided into five major areas uh, that I'll be focusing this webinar is investment appraisal that can be tested in section A B and C but most likely it's C business finance uh, uh, includes a very important portion of VAC okay 
so uh, business finance includes a very important portion of VAC. Now business finance itself is a big section and uh, uh, it, it also includes VAC. There are other areas in business finance as well like financial ratios, like dividend policy, like sources of finance and the fourth is VAC. Okay, So uh, I have written VAC separately. It is just because I'll be dealing with VAC separately uh, compared to the other areas of business finance and there is a big reason behind it. So I will definitely cover up that in the three days webinar. Okay, So uh, Again, for section A, for section B, section C. Now, VAC is again mostly tested in section C, right? VAC is tested in section C. Then you have business valuation, uh, a very, very important area for objective test. So, will be tested in section A. You can expect a question from business valuation to come in section B. And here, this is written by mistake. It's not yes. In fact, it's no. So it means that it will not come in section C. It will not come in section C. So there is a big, big chance that it comes in section B. Working capital uh, always remains examiner's favorite area. Can come in all the three areas. Uh, you can expect a question of working capital in any of the sections. Uh, yeah, it's theory based as well. So you need to have a good grip over theory as well. Risk management. A favorite area of the examiner, very much likely to come in section B as a second or third question or a first question maybe of section B uh, because this will not come in section C. So uh, the more likely chances for this to come in section B. So these are the two definite topics which I can say that uh, should come in section B. There are very high chances whereas section C will include investment appraisal for sure and it could be between working capital or business finance as a second question of section C, okay? Uh, as far as section A is concerned, anything com can come in section A. So this is a big, uh, uh, this is a quick analysis that I've did in front of you people. So the topics likely for section B are valuation and risk management, whereas for section C it's investment appraisal, business finance and working capital okay now after this uh, yeah it's like a roller coaster past paper trend uh, you can see uh, 50 went to 46 came back to 50 came to 43 came increased to 44 wow so can you see this 52 52 was September 20 attempt uh, a very high. In fact, if you see, you can see the highest passing ratio was in September. Then it came back uh, to 45 in December. So that's bad. And I expect the downfall not to continue. But we have to increase the trend and we have to bring this back on the up pitch direction. So uh, yeah, I would say that F9 passing ratio remains overall a good one compared to other papers, especially if I compare this with performance management, the one that I teach. So uh, comparatively, uh, people do pass, but still people are struggling because of certain major reasons. Let's have a look here. The reasons uh, could be in section A of the paper, candidates are struggling in theory-based objective test question. This is a major reason for failure. So please make sure that you are very much clear in terms of the theoretical OTs that are tested in section A. Candidates are not covering the entire syllabus. Don't go for selective study. You cannot go for selective study because as I just showed you uh, previously in the previous slide that section A uh, is an area, uh, the question can come from anywhere. It's It can come from all the areas of the paper. So you can't do selective study at all, okay? Rounding off mistakes, uh, yeah, this is bad. Uh, you are losing easy marks because you don't know what two decimal or three decimal uh, or nearest million or thousand actually means. So please just ensure that your skills in rounding off are good as you're not losing easy marks. Then uh, section B, common failures, uh, reason for failures includes candidate do not read the scenario actively. Now this is uh, one of the major uh, issues that is that is highlighted a lot these days by the examiner is that in section B because you have a scenario and there are five objective test questions that are that are connected with the scenario. So normally what students are doing, 
when they are solving those uh, OTs of section B, they consider that question as an isolated one. And they are not linking that with the scenario. And that is why you are losing the marks. You solve that OT just uh, like that it's an isolated one having no connection with the scenario. So that is why you are losing easy two marks even though you know the answers but because of the lack of connection with the scenario you are not getting the right answers. So this is where you need to really work on. Okay. Candidates do not relate answers with scenario. I've already mentioned this and again here if there are fill in the blank uh, area questions like fill in the blank uh, numerical questions so people are doing the same mistake as they are not able to round off and are losing marks okay then section c major uh, reasons for failure candidates do not understand question requirements now this is an area where narrative calculation narrative questions are tested numerical calculations uh, numerical questions are coming so people are not understanding what they are required to do uh, they are not using spreadsheet to their own advantage where you need to understand the fact that a spreadsheet is something uh, you can use to your advantage and and I will show you the real benefits of a spreadsheet uh, in these webinars and uh, I'll try my best to make a spreadsheet a strength for you and you can use this really uh, conveniently and it will save a lot lot of time. Candidates do not relate answers with the scenario. This is definitely for the theoretical narrative parts that are tested in section C. So this is one flaw you are doing. You need to ensure that you have to link uh, if the question requires you to link it. Okay. Candidates are not focusing on gaining easy marks. Yes, this is a very important area. There are always easy marks available and I'll, I will time to time tell you in the questions while solving the questions how to grip on easy marks because easy marks gives you a really good opportunity to grab the marks easily and those easy mark ensures that you pass in a particular question. So whether it's paper of performance management or advanced performance management or any other paper of ACCA, it's a general guideline that always remember that entire 100% paper is not difficult. There are easy marks available. So make sure you uh, just grab those easy marks, okay? Candidates are answering what they thought they were being asked rather than what they were being asked. So this is a big problem. We answer what, what we want to answer rather than what is required in the question to answer. Again, it's a problem of not understanding the question required. Okay, so these are major issues. I'm sure you are keeping all these things in your mind before the paper and you have to make sure that you are not trapped into these problems. Now, uh, <clears throat> let me tell you a quick plan what I will be doing in the webinar for three days. So I will be less focusing on knowledge, more focus on practice because it will be my assumption that very near to the examination, the knowledge is good. Okay, but still I'll give you a recap. Second, I will be focusing on OTs, obviously OTs and Section C constructive response. ACCA platform will be used uh, because this will give you the idea how the question will be tested under exam conditions. So I'll use that as well, okay? Uh, this is the scope of the webinar and now the day wise plan. So let's begin with day one where I will be teaching about investment appraisal and VAC because VAC is one portion of business finance as I mentioned. So my focus here will be investment appraisal and VAC. Okay. Then the remaining part of business finance will be dealt uh, in day two along with very important business valuation. Okay. Day three, I've dedicated for working capital and risk management. So I'll keep a balance of section C and section B's here to make sure that your skills are being uh, high, your skills are being polished in section B as well as in section C. Okay, so make sure all these three days are important and if you want to pass, so remember these three days are important and after that uh, there will be a mock session. Obviously all these uh, three days webinar are free for you people, you don't have to pay for this. Okay. Uh, these are free for you people, but uh, followed by a mock session. Uh, 
uh, that will be a paid mock session. Uh, and for me, it's really important that people should be attempting mock because if you don't attempt mock, you don't know where you are getting wrong. Mock gives you the uh, last minute confidence. Mock uh, actually replicates the examination environment. Mock uh, teaches you the pressure of exam. Mock um, creates your, 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 creates your mindset uh, for the paper. Mock gives you the ability to absorb pressure in the paper. So I think the recipe to pass now is you attend all the three days webinar to listen to the webinars, to understand each and everything. I have, uh, I've used easy notes here. I will share the notes on the respective WhatsApp groups as well. Uh, so do cover your things from these easy notes along with that do cover all these three days webinar and after that we'll have a, a, a mock session that will be a paid mock session unfortunately uh, but uh, if you are interested so do let me know about this uh, this and I will share the details because this mock uh, will be a game changer for you will give the confidence I will check the mock and will get back to you I will give you individual feedback uh, in relation to what you have done in this mock, okay? So this is a mock package, that, which is a paid mock package that will be uh, that will that that will be uh, activated once we are done with this three free day webinar. One more thing I need to add here is the grand revision uh, I will be conducting as well in the uh, next in the, in the coming week. Uh, this is again a free one. You can uh, easily be part of the grand revision. This is not a paid one that will give you a good confidence before the paper. So uh, grand revision will be a one that I'll conduct later on. Anyways, so uh, you, as you can see here, this is a quick uh, plan for you people. Attend the webinars, attend the grand revision that will be held next week. And uh, if you really want to improve your chances of passing, you should enter in this mock package that I'll announce soon through the WhatsApp groups, okay? Uh, having said that, let's begin with today's agenda and that is investment appraisal. So let's begin with investment appraisal. I will give you a quick recap of the things. I'm, I'm sure you know the basics. So I'll use my smart notes here and smartly will give you a quick revision of the things. Do listen to me if something is new for you. So do listen to me and later on through the WhatsApp groups, do look at these smart handouts that will make your life easier. So if you still are not part of my FM WhatsApp groups, make sure you do send me a quick message at this number and later on after the session, I will share the link with you people, okay? So let's begin with investment appraisal. The most important topic is NPV. This is the most tested topic of your paper. So the Quick basic guidelines about NPV. NPV uh, is a technique which is basically a difference between present value of inflows and outflows. Okay, so there are certain assumptions uh, which are really important in NPV that I first need to bring in front of you people. That in NPV, remember uh, the investment that you show in NPV will always be shown in year zero. So you'll always show investment in year zero. Make sure that, okay? Second, if in a question, if you see that uh, it is written that any cash flow that is arising at the beginning of the year, okay? And beginning of the year uh, means that, for example, it says that a cash flow will arise at the start of any year, start of any year, okay? maybe 1st January of any year. So if you see in a question, uh, it is mentioned that a cash flow will arise at the start of any year. Remember, you don't have to show that cash flow in that respective year, rather than you have to show that cash flow uh, at the end of previous year, okay? At the end of previous year, this is really important, you know, because for discounting purpose, we don't have discount factors which are uh, for the start of the year. Uh, discount factors, whatever we have, uh, actually relates to end of any year, okay? So if I'm using year one discount factor, that is basically covering the entire one year. If I have discount factor year for year two, so that is covering year two completely, right? So do remember 
that uh, a very simple thing you have to keep in your mind any cash flow that will arise at the start of the year will not be shown in that year rather you'll show this uh, in the previous year okay secondly uh, <clears throat> You are not required to take the cost of interest uh, in NPV calculation. You know why? Because uh, interest is already part of cost of capital. Uh, cost of capital is basically known as VAC and we'll cover that as well. So uh, already it is part of cost of capital because cost of capital basically includes the cost of equity. It includes the cost of debt. Okay. When I say it includes the cost of debt, which means that you don't have to include the interest in NPV calculation. You don't have to show the cash flow of interest, okay? I know uh, interest is a cash outflow. You pay the interest. It's a cash flow. So you should take in NPV. I know everything. But the point here is because in NPV, uh, you discount the cash flows using the cost of capital and that cost of capital includes the impact of cost of debt that is interest which means to avoid duplication you can't take the interest cash flow again in NPV because you are already incorporating that through weighted average cost of capital okay so remember if you see any question in the paper where there is an interest cash outflow shown ignore that great now uh, complex calculations of NPV will include uh, inflation okay inflation will be tested in the paper taxation will come in your paper as well uh, fixed cost treatment will be tested in your paper and working capital uh, can come in your paper so when I say calculation so it's my guarantee to everybody of you that in NPV question you will see the maximum four adjustments that purely relates to NPV so these are the four things if you cover up perfectly you pick up any question of any attempt I can guarantee you you will not see anything more than these four things that purely relates to NPV calculation okay uh, a quick one if you get Positive NPV, the project should be accepted. You all know that. But what is the rationale behind that? So do listen very carefully to the rationale. The rationale is if it is a positive NPV, uh, it means that it should be accepted. Now, if someone asks you why, so your answer should be about two things. Number one, listen very carefully. Number one, uh, it is covering the cost of capital, okay? It is covering the cost of capital, right? And second, uh, the amount by which the NPV is positive, okay? You get a positive answer of 50,000, let's suppose. So by the, the amount by which the NPV is positive, that is the amount by which the shareholder wealth will be created, okay? So, uh, the concept behind acceptance is of two things. Number one, NPV is positive. It means it is covering the cost of capital, the first thing. And the amount by which the NPV is positive is the amount by which the shareholder wealth is increasing. If it is negative, reject it. Why? Just one reason and that is it is not covering the cost of capital. Okay? If it is not covering cost of capital it is not covering WAC, then it's useless, right? So don't invest in that project. Third, if you see NPV zero, if it is zero case of NPV, so it's basically a break even situation. And in break even, uh, what you need to do? So you need to analyze the situation. <clears throat> and that is what? What you do, if you get a answer of zero, so do very simple thing. And what is that? Just see whether you have any other project, any other opportunity available. If you have any other opportunity available, okay. So just do one thing that uh, accept that project, which means if you have any other project with a positive NPV, okay. So just accept that project because that is giving you a positive NPV. But if you don't have any such opportunity of positive NPV project, then you can accept this project the reason is if 
a project shows zero NPV, so it means that it is covering just cost of capital. It is covering just cost of capital, which means it is covering the minimum return that is required by the shareholder. So what's bad in it? If it is covering the minimum return required by the shareholder, it's perfect to be honest, okay? But if you have any other project with a very good positive NPV that can create value creation for the shareholder, don't wait and invest there, okay? So this was a quick recap. Now let's look at the complexity very quickly. I'll just give you a quick, quick recap about these four complex calculations. So let's begin with uh, inflation. Remember, there are two types of inflation in the paper. General rate of inflation, if you see in a question where there is just single rate for all, what I mean to say by this is that if you see selling price, if you see variable cost, if you see fixed cost, if you see working capital, all uh, need to be inflated using a single rate. For example, let's suppose 5%. So it's a general rate of inflation question, okay? But if in the examination, if you saw, you read the question, you saw that there are separate or different rates given for these, maybe selling price inflation is 4%, whereas the cost inflation is 5%. So now if you see more than one rates, so it's basically a specific rate of inflation situation, okay? So general one rate, specific separate rates. Moving forward, remember the term real cash flows basically are used for those cash flows which are not inflated, okay? So cash flows which are not inflated are known as real cash flows without inflation cash flows. And if you inflate the cash flows, uh, now how can you inflate it? You can either inflate using uh, general rate, okay? or you can either inflate using specific rate. So when you inflate the cash flows either by specific or general, so you make them nominal cash flows, which means cash flows which are with inflation. Got it? Great, that's perfect. One more thing I need to tell you is that discount rates, okay. So uh, discount rates also needs to be inflated. If you are inflating the cash flows, if you are converting real cash flows into nominal cash flows, so the discount rates also needs to be inflated, right? So for that, you have a formula and we call this formula as Fisher effect. And this formula basically helps uh, to inflate uh, the cost of capital, okay? So it's one plus real rate uh, into inflation, which means real rate is a one in which there is no inflation, right? So it's without inflation, okay? So if you inflate the real rate, you make that a nominal rate. So uh, remember, you need to uh, convert a real rate into nominal uh, rate if you're converting the real cash flows into nominal cash flows, okay? So the conversion of discount rates is done through Fisher effect where you convert a real rate into nominal, right? So the last important thing is, uh, this is basically the rule of thumb, I would say. It's the rule of thumb. Now, what's the rule? Remember, real cash flows which which basically means cash flows without inflation, right? So real cash flows will be discounted using a cost of capital that is without inflation, which is known as real rate, okay? If cash flows are nominal, okay, if cash flows are nom nominal, so remember you will inflate, which, sorry, remember you will discount the cash flows using a rate that itself is nominal, okay? So for nominal cash flows, which means cash flows that are inflated one, you will, will discount those cash flows using a rate that itself is a nominal rate, which means that itself is a rate including inflation. So it's a rule of thumb, okay? So real cash flows, real cost of capital, nominal cash flows, nominal cost of capital, right? Now, quickly, let's jump towards the things of fixed costs. Remember, in a question, either the fixed cost will be 
irrelevant you will not incorporate it because the fixed cost could be a sunk cost already had been incurred or it will be a committed cost which means a cost that you will incur irrespective of the project so there could be a possibility that fixed cost will be irrelevant and this has been tested in a question let me take the name of the question uh, was tested in 2008 june known as sc company where you were required not to take fixed cost because that was not relevant now it could be a situation where fixed cost will be relevant which means fixed cost will be an incremental one and if that is the case so you need to take the fixed cost okay so if you take the fixed cost there are further two possibilities that you may need to inflate it okay because you need to inflate fixed costs uh, as required in the question and there could be a possibility of step up as well okay so this has been tested as well this came in examination question known as redact company and this was question, tested in examination question known as brt company where there was a step up as well in the fixed cost okay let's move on towards working capital remember working capital uh, is very important for a question you make capital expenditure so you need to input working capital for the day-to-day -day expenses okay so remember working capital will be invested in year zero okay it will be invested in year zero always uh, working capital investment will be shown in zero for sure now you need to increase the working capital sometimes uh, due to the business expansion which means if your business is expanding if the sales of the business is increasing so you need to increase the day working capital for day-to-day -day expenses okay so incremental working capital is a concept which means that if business is expanding you need to increase the investment in working capital and likewise if business is going down so you need to decrease the working capital as well okay another reason why you uh, increase the working capital is due to inflation there could be a possibility where you need to inflate the working capital as well you need to inflate the working capital as well because of the inflation impact okay Remember, all investment made in working capital, whether that investment was because of the inflation or because of the expansion, whatever you have invested in the name of working capital, all will be shown as inflow in the last year. In the last year, all will be shown as inflow, uh, last year of the project, okay? So all will be shown as inflow in the last year of the project you have to show whatever you have invested but if it's a perpetuity case which means the business is an ongoing business business is a never-ending business so in that case yeah you will not show that inflow else you will show the inflows okay so four things to remember investment of working capital initially will be shown in year zero you may need to increase working capital during the project life due to inflation adjustment or business going up or maybe going down you need to decrease it what all you have invested in the name of working capital will all be shown as inflow in the project last year provided the project is not an ongoing one so these are the golden words I'm telling you right now if you able to remember my golden words in a summarized way you can grip on things Taxation, the last thing before I move towards my past paper question, uh, tax payments uh, are is in areas normally it's the case, uh, but it's mentioned in the paper. Normally it's the case that payment of taxes in areas, which means year one tax will be paid in two and like this two will be paid in three. But sometimes there are questions where you will see that uh, taxation uh, payments are to be made in the same year which means one tax will be paid in one, two tax will be paid in two. So do make sure that you find out that, okay? In case of taxation questions, remember discount rate, that is the cost of capital, should be post-tax. You have to use post-tax cost of capital, okay? Uh, in every taxation question, if a possible question says you that there is a uh, 
cost of capital which is pre-tax and there is another cost of capital which is post-tax. So which you will take, which you will opt for. So it's very simple. You will opt for uh, that one that is post-tax. Okay, great. Now, uh, the last thing here is <clears throat> capital allowances normally uh, are tested in your paper based on reducing balance basis. Normally, it is tested more on reducing balance basis where you get the capital uh, allowances, the, the relief uh, on the investment. Uh, so that is normally tested based on reducing balance method. But there is another method that may come tested less in the paper is straight line method, okay? Straight line method tested very less. 90% uh, of the times you will see this method that is being tested here in the exams. Uh, so both are the methods that may come uh, and both are the methods which are basically used for calculating capital allowances in the question, okay? But if it is a reducing balance basis, so remember uh, this is the format uh, of balancing charge and allowance. So in reducing balance, the last year of the project, whatever is the last year of the project, Remember, uh, you need to work out balancing charge or balancing allowance in the last year of the project. Uh, then this is the format to calculate the, the balancing charge or allowance, which is something that you will calculate in the last year of the project, okay? So you can see the format. It's uh, value of asset, net of already claimed written down allowance. Asset disposal value is what you will deduct and the balance you get as a balancing charge or an allowance. If the answer is positive, so it's an allowance, okay, which means you will get the tax saving on this. And if the answer is negative, so it's a charge, which means you have to pay the tax on this, okay. So this is very much clear. Now, uh, the magical uh, cases that I always tell to my students through my online, physical, whatever classes you take, uh, is that for Capital allowances, I would say, whether you are using reducing balance method or straight line method, the most important thing is when to start the claim of capital allowance. When to start the claim of capital allowance, okay? When you need to start the first claim of capital allowance. So there are three cases that I've made. These are not available as such in the books. This is just for your ease. Uh, and through this, you are able to really figure out the question, what kind of case you need to follow. So I'll sh show you this as well in today's question as well. So the case one is uh, asset purchase at the start of the year. So you can start the capital allowance from year one. Uh, how will you figure out this? Some kind of a date given in the paper, like 1st January uh, 20x2, like it is mentioned in the question itself that you have made investment at the start of the year. So when it is very clearly mentioned that when you are making the investment, uh, so it's case uh, uh, one here as per this uh, document. And according to this case, uh, you will start your first claim from year one. So any kind of a date you need to find out. Second, asset purchase at the end of year zero. Again, for this to happen, you need to figure out the date. Maybe uh, it says we bought the asset at uh, 31st of December, for example. So this is at the end of the year, uh, at the end of year zero. And if that is the case, then again, I would say that you uh, will follow the instruction. That is the first claim will start from year zero. The last is nothing mentioned, which is the biggest question you people ask. If nothing is mentioned, what to do? So if nothing is mentioned, so you start from year one, okay? So if you follow my cases, I'm sure you will not struggle in any attempt of NPV question. Everything that I just told you is covering all the attempts of NPV question you take out uh, uh, from the past paper. You will not feel difficult at all. So this is clear. The most tested is this one, okay? The second, on, on second number, I would say, this is tested most. And the last tested, the least number of time it has been tested is the second case, okay? So this was a quick recap of the things that in people should know if they want to cover everything of NPV, you cover these things that I mentioned for inflation, taxation, fixed cost, and working capital. 
you will 100% complete NPV. So let's time for past paper, section C. Key tips to make sure that you uh, don't do anything bad. Complete this in 36 minutes. Reason is the question of section C will be for 20 marks. Perform calculations that are carefully structured. Now for calculations, structure is important. You have to show a logical structure, clearly set out with all workings shown in an easy to follow layout, which means your examiner will follow your calculations. So whatever you are doing in spreadsheet, you have to make sure that that is clearly given, clearly mentioned, and you are not, uh, you are not, uh, you know, uh, getting into trouble uh, or and if to ensure that the examiner doesn't get into trouble finding out the things, right? So make sure that the layout should be easy. Write accurately and coherently using simple English rather than long rambling sentences which have no structure and no real content. So yeah, this is also important. Whatever you write for the narrative questions, clear, short paragraphs, not so big paragraphs, and to the point it should be, okay? So after these instructions, it's time to move towards the past paper. Here we are with a very late, latest attempt question of March and June hybrid attempt. Uh, pink company is what we are starting from. And this is a question in front of you. So let's begin with this section C question of 20 marks where we are required to work out two NPVs. Now a small instruction that I want to share with you people is whenever you start with a question of section C, just quickly read the requirements, just highlight the key things what are being tested so you exactly know what to do. So it says calculate the NPV, okay? It says calculate the NPV now using nominal uh, method. Nominal method is what? Nominal method generally means that with inflation, which means that uh, you have to work out the NPV that is with inflation. The impact of inflation needs to be considered, right? Uh, so this is nominal method. This is for eight marks. I will share the marking scheme. I will tell you how to gain easy marks. Then the second is calculate real method NPV. Uh, so this is another NPV which you can see of less marks it is being tested and there is a reason because less amount of work exactly is required and this is what I'll teach you. This is what my technique will teach you how to save your time and gain more and more marks. So maybe you've done this question before, I'm not sure, but the technique that I'll teach you is a different one. You need to understand technique. If you are good in knowledge, but you don't know how to pass the paper, you will not pass the paper because passing the paper using the technique is a separate thing and learning different things is a separate thing, okay? So, and both are important for a successful grade in FM. So, you can see here this, now there is a word and, okay? Now this and is separating the requirement and which requires you to comment on your findings. So this is another uh, thing that is being tested. And yes, remember, you need to uh, answer this as well because marks are available. Discuss four ways uh, to encourage managers to achieve stakeholder objectives. This is for eight marks. Eight marks are too much, okay? Now let's begin. Ping company is a large company listed on major stock exchange. Okay, in recent years, the board of Pink has uh, been criticized for weak corporate governance and two of the company's non-executive directors have resigned. Okay, so a quick background is being given to you, which means there, there is a weak corporate governance and non-executive directors have resigned. Okay. A recent story in financial media has criticized the performance of Pink and claims that company is failing to satisfy the objectives of its stakeholders. So that is why that second part is tested. Pink company is appraising an investment project which it hopes will boost its performance. The project will cost 20 million. 
payable in full at the start of the operation. Now, please do listen what I'm saying here. Very important instructions I'm giving you. While you are reading the question, you have to highlight certain things as I am doing in front of you. So let's change the color. Yeah. You see, this 20 million is your investment, right? And on this investment, uh, you uh, can claim capital allowances uh, if required in the question. So you need to figure out that when will you make this investment? So it is very clearly written here, payable in full at the start. See, at the start of the first year of operation. At the start of the first year of operation. So uh, this means that for capital allowances, if I tell you, uh, and if I go to my uh, instructions, so you can easily see here from the cases, these are the cases which are in front of you people. Now, if I ask you to relate, now, what do you think uh, this highlighted sentence actually relates with the cases? Now, which case you think this actually relates to? Here, I need your answers. I am seeing the chat box. So, can you tell me, please, uh, which case you think this is related to? Okay. So, let's go here. Yeah. Which case? It's very easy. See? I'm showing you how easy it is for you people to figure out. So yeah, none than the other. Let me just clear out the things here. None than the other. It's case one. Yes. See, case one has been tested in the paper. That the question that we are doing right now, it's case one. And I would love to get feedback from all of you, okay, in the chat box. So it's good to see that majority is saying that it's case one. You are exactly right. Okay. It's case one. So asset purchase at the start of the year. And this is what I was mentioning that it should be clearly mentioned. So uh, let me write it down here as well that this is case one. Okay, and this is how we figure out in the paper whether it's case one or not. So I've written here it's case one. Okay. The project life is expected to be of four years. That's nice. <clears throat> Forecast sales, volume, selling price, variable cost, and fixed cost are as follows. You can see units here, selling price, variable cost, and fixed cost. Great. Selling price and cost information are in current price terms. Now, remember, whenever you see this word, current price terms, it indicates what? It indicates that cash flows are in real terms, which means that the cash flows are in current price terms. When I say current, so you know the meaning of current right now, which means these from futures perspective are not inflated cash flows, okay? These are not inflated cash flows. So current price terms is indicative of the fact that it's in real terms without inflation. Before applying selling price inflation of 5%, variable cost inflation of 3.5%, fixed cost inflation of 6%, okay? So now, did you see one thing? Did you notice one thing? And what is that? Different rates, different rates. So it's, it's what? Come on, you can reply me in the chat box. It's specific rate of inflation or general rate of inflation. Let me see how many of you will quickly answer. So it's very simple. It's a specific rate of inflation. Things are getting clear in the question. It's a specific rate of inflation, different rates. Okay, good to see your quick responses. Still, I need everybody to answer. So, done with this as well. That is not an issue. Very good. Now, PINCO pays tax 26% with the tax liability being settled in the year in which it arises. So, that's really nice. There is not a situation of areas. Okay, not a situation of areas. So, no areas here. Got it? The company can claim tax allowable depreciation. This is capital allowance on a full initial investment of 20 million on 25% reducing basis. Okay. I, I mentioned this is what is tested more. 
The investment project is expected to have a zero residual value at the end of four years. PIN company has a nominal after tax. Now remember I did tell you later on when I was at the slides that in case of a taxation question, uh, always the cost of capital should be after tax, okay? So the nominal is 12% and a real after tax is 8%. So both are after tax because in case of taxation, it's always after tax that you have to take, okay? The general inflation is expected to be 3.7% per year for the foreseeable future. So that is also given to me, general rate of inflation. Now it's time to move on and let's begin with the solution, okay? And I'll do this on a spreadsheet to make it simple for you people to understand. So here we are uh, at the constructive response workspace and uh, let's learn how to get easy marks, how to make things easier for you in the paper. So this is what your examination uh, will include and this is how it will be tested in the paper. Now uh, you can see the question will appear on one side of the screen and the second side obviously uh, will be the area of the workspace where you will be performing your calculations. Now uh, let's begin with this part and let's see how are we supposed to handle such a question in the examination. So let's begin with the solution of this March, June 2019 question, okay? <clears throat> the first thing that I will tell you here, the first instruction I need to give you here is that, first of all, what can you do to make this more easy? So you can just uh, make it more bigger like this and let's make this 200% so that it's clearly visible to all of you what I'm doing here. And let's begin with this question of pink company. Let's begin with a solution and let's see how to handle this in a very easy to style method on a spreadsheet and that will make things really simple for you. So. Here we are, part A is what you will write here. Part A, you have to work out nominal NPV, okay, of pink company. Now the project life, you can write here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now quickly what you can do is, uh, because you have read the question, you know the cash flows that are relevant here. So you can quickly just note down the entire list first because you should know what you're gonna do. So it's revenue that is relevant here. You even have variable cost here as well, okay? So variable cost, then we have fixed cost as well. Then after that, you will work out taxable uh, cash flows from these, okay? Then uh, you will show the tax payments, right? And uh, what else was in the question? You, you were also given with tax savings, right? So these are the cash flows that are relevant here that you need to consider. Okay, after tax savings, uh, you will get the figure of investment, scrap if there is any, and then net cash flows, okay? So this is what the entire format will look like. Then you will have discount factor and I'll show you how I'll make this really easy for you people with less amount of time invested. But yeah, you should know the basics of spreadsheet that is for sure, okay? So obviously I'm not here to teach you the basics of addition multiplication. I will assume that you know that, but I will show you the way to organize your answer and get the answer quickly as as quickly as possible so here we have <clears throat> the information now after the format i will recommend you to just note down the units and here are the units you can see so i'll just write the units uh, <clears throat> so that will make my life easier 300000 year 1 
here 2, 4, 10, 5, 2, 5, and the last year is 2, 20. Okay, so these are the units. I've written units purposefully at the top. I know uh, what I'll do here, so I'll show you as this as well. <coughs> Examiner says that <coughs> show uh, logical references wherever you are doing working. So I'm do showing a working one here. <clears throat> and I'll do working down. This is a working area. Okay. <clears throat> and W1. So examiner exactly knows where working one is being done. Now, <clears throat> do make sure that whatever, whatever uh, errors you have here, you just copy the same sequence down. Okay done okay same the 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 column should be same right so selling price is what i need to work out and what is the selling price right now so you have selling prices given in the question so it's 125 130 140 and 120 so now do understand what i'm doing here year one one two five 130, 140, and 120. We'll teach you the best technique to handle this, okay? Be with me. So 125, 130, 140, 120. Now these are all in real terms and I have an inflation rate here. So how to inflate these? The best way to do it, the qu quickest possible way I'm telling you, and this will make your life really easy really really easy okay so now let's work out the inflated selling price what i'll do i'll do a magic in front of you people and what will be the magic are you ready for the magic first of all say yes or no do you want to see the magic if you want to say yes so let me highlight the inflation rate of selling price it's five percent okay these are the selling prices i have right and the inflation rate is five percent so let me show you a real magic using spreadsheet. Okay, see what I'll do here, I'll make a formula here. Uh, my entire game is of formulas. So what I did, I selected the selling price that is given in D18, okay, D18, right? If I select the selling price. Now I want this selling price to be an inflated one. So I'll use the multiplication sign, we'll open the bracket, okay? and will input the inflation rate. So I'll multiply this with five, 105%, okay? So I can write this as 1.05 and close the bracket. So 1.05 basically represents 105%. Is that true? Yeah, it, this is true, 105%. So uh, it's D18 into 1.05. Now there is a sign of power. So on my keyboard, you have a button of shift and six digit where you see the power sign, like this, the power sign. And I want to inflate this just once because I need selling price for year one. So I'll just inflate this with power one because I want this to be in year one terms. If I say current, so it's in year zero terms, right? So if you want to bring anything which is in zero to year one, you inflate that by power one. You will inflate that by just one inflation rate, okay? You will just inflate that once. So this is what I've done. You can have a good look at the formula. D18, 125 into 105%. Power I took from D16. One is actually indicating that once I'll apply the inflation rate. And here it's 131.25 see so having done this having done this okay what is next you can see okay what is next i don't have to do anything it's this this is the real magic i'll just copy this through control c okay and we'll paste here Wow, I'm getting the answers automatically. Now this figure is of year two selling price, year three. 
This is of year three. Wow, magic. Nothing I'm doing more. Year four. Wow. This is the technique to learn. This is only someone can teach who himself or herself is expert using spreadsheets. And this is what I say in F9. It's a game of a spreadsheet. So see, done. You check the answers, you get the same answers. And I'll show you the working, how this is working actually. See, I'll highlight here. So see, the selling price is 130. You inflated this by, uh, again, with the, the same percentage of 105. And the power two, which means you have to inflate this figure two times. If something is in year zero, so if you want to bring that to year one, inflate once. If you need to bring that thing to year two, inflates, inflate that twice. If you need to bring that thing to year three, inflate that thrice. Thrice means year uh, three times. So the power will be applied three times. That's this is why connected with three. Okay, great. And if you need to infl inflate that for four years, so you need to bring that four years ahead. So you have to use the power four for that, which you just saw here, power four. And see, magic. Loved it? Come on, what's your feedback? Is this easy now? Just one formula inputted, the rest three figures straightforward. Awesome work. No issues at all. Got it, guys? Simple. So it's the selling price into the rate of inflation and power four and done. Great. Now, once we are done with this, now let's connect the things. See how I'll do it. Units, I've written purposefully above, multiplied by, let's go down, selling price. So 131.25, right? Here we have the figure. You, you, might, you must be concerned, what is this? So just open this. Okay. Great. No issues. So done. Now, let's see the magic. Because I've inputted the formula already, I'll just use Control C and we'll paste other years and I get the figures for other years automatically. Can you see the game? Wow. Interesting. Really interesting. Saving lot of time. Saving lot a lot of time. See? So I hope the technique is amazing for you people. Right? So this is what you should be doing in the paper, friends. This is the... This is the thing to, to learn. This is for free. So just take maximum benefit, right? Great. So I'm sure you understood how I inflated this with less time it took. And you have the figures in front of you. So the similar thing needs to be done now for variable cost. So W2, the best way to present answer in CBE. Figure two, C, variable cost. So do we have variable cost again? Yes, it's 71, 71, 71, 71. Wow, it's same, it's same for all the years, right? So uh, is it same? So what to do? Nothing. The similar thing will be done here as well. 71, 71, 71, okay? Now, the similar thing will be applied, inflated variable cost, okay? So what will be the formula and what is the rate of inflation? So the rate of inflation for variable cost is 3.5, right? is equals to, let's select this, multiplied by, bracket open, it's 3.5%, which is 1.035, okay, 1.035, connect the power, because I need to inflate this once, 
for year one once for year two twice for year three thrice for year four four times okay clear just copy this and paste wow a quick check just for your satisfaction so you can see this one 71 inflation rate and connected with fourth year which means four times you will inflate this to bring this from year zero to year four got it i hope everybody is getting my point and it is making much much sense now right now the similar thing i'll do here but with a small difference is i'll input a negative sign to show this negative cash flow to show this as a negative cash flow minus units multiplied by minus sign is important okay and we'll connect this with the variable cost here you go we'll copy this and we'll paste here and don't worry just need to open the cells and the things will be i'll make this very clear for you in a while don't worry about the figures or the decimals no tension I'll, I'll make this very simple done so this is the variable cost working uh, for all the years i hope this is clear with no problem at all okay understood everyone See, the units for year four multiplied by the selling price. Sorry, variable cost. Okay. So done. Negative sign was important. So just input the negative sign before. Now fixed cost. Okay. So for fixed cost, what are we supposed to do? Let's go back and see. Do we need to inflate fixed cost? Yes. We have a 6% inflation rate. And these are the figures. Okay. Great. So, what to do for fixed cost? Uh, for fixed cost, we have working three, a similar one. Okay, working three. We have fixed cost. Let's write the figures. 3,000, 3,100, okay, 3,200, but this is in thousands. Yeah, this is what I need to keep in my mind. 3200, 3100 because I'm doing calculation full digits. Okay, and last is again 3000. Now, inflated once, it will not take time. Inflated fixed cost. Simple. You know what I'll, what I'll do here? Yeah, I'll do the similar thing again. I know the rate of inflation is 6% for the fixed cost and I'm sure you know what I'm going to do is equals to power, sorry, multiplication sign 1.06, that is 106%, we'll connect this with the other one because I need to inflate this once, see, similar thing I'm doing, now copy paste third, fourth, and I'm getting the figures. 100% right figures. And you can do a quick check of this as well. So this is the fourth year fixed cost. You inflated this four times because it is in current terms. So you bring this four years ahead, which means four times you will apply the inflation. And you can see here the figures in front of you. The only concern here is make sure you write these in terms of negative. So let's do it. Is equals to use a minus sign bef before the figure is equals to minus sign and just connect this with this cell. You get this figure. Control C, Control V. So what Rizwan Mania thinks, you know, is that a correct formula for year one for all the workings. The rest you can just copy paste for year two, three, and four. That's it. One time you have to input the formula for one thing for one year. 
and the rest is just copy paste and this is how you can save a lot of time in the paper i hope you agree now let's apply the sum formula because negatives are in negatives i'll select these three the bunch this is the figure let's copy and paste wow tax payments so what about tax payments are tax payments in areas no in that same year and the tax rate is how much 26 percent right same year so it's simple is equals to this amount multiplied by 0.26 now when i'm doing a mistake here is that i'm not using the negative sign so let's input a negative sign before maybe d7 that would be fine okay so negative sign just to ensure that the figure should be negative because it's tax payments so it's the cell d7 multiplied by the tax rate same here okay control c control v magic 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 okay great now what is the amount of investment in the question uh the investment is of 20 million right yeah 20 million so minus minus 20 million okay one two three four five six seven and here you have 20 million okay now the next last thing before my working gets end is i need to work out tax saving on the investment of 20 million for that let's go to working for you can see the references that i've shown here this is what matters in the this is the presentation the clear presentation so tax savings okay let's compute tax savings now so how to work out tax savings very simple as i've already mentioned that it was clearly given in the question that the investment has been made at the start of the year as you can see so this is your case one which means the first capital allowance claim will actually start from year one okay from year one so let's begin so just write it down here one column is for year second column is for capital allowance third column is for tax saving first year is year one year two it's a four-year project right yeah three and four now 25 percent reducing balance basis what i'll do i'll just input the figure of 20 million multiplied by 0.25 okay it's 5 million right now here again i will use the shortcut the rate is 25 right so for the remaining years simple do one thing select this multiply with 0.75 multiply with 0.75 okay so this will save your time again 3.75 million great for third year again this figure into 0.75 as it's 25 percent right so i'll take 0.75 from year two and three now year four is the last year so remember for last year what are we supposed to do so in case of reducing balance basis this is what is important that we need to use okay this is something that we will use in last year so let's do it here i am in the last year net investment okay how to work out simple 20 million investment deduct the first year allowance then the second year allowance 
than the third year allowance. Getting the point everyone? 20 million, deduct the first year allowance, the second year allowance, the third year allowance. So this is the amount where you can still claim the tax saving. Now, are there any sort of uh, anything given for scrap? Nothing. Because the question stated, zero residual value. Zero residual value. So no residual value here. Balancing allowance. If the answer is positive, it's balancing allowance. Okay. It's balancing allowance. And this will go in year four, as you can see in front of yourself. So I hope I'm making this simple. Now, tax savings 0.26% of this figure, okay, just copy this and paste, you get figures of tax saving for all the remaining four years. Are you getting my point everyone? Is this clear to all of you? I'm sure it should be, it should be clear. The way I'm doing it, I'm making this clear, simple to the point, okay? Now, you can see the tax savings. Okay, now just ask yourself, once you're done with this calculation, just ask yourself whether answer is required in areas or not. So the question has mentioned that tax will be paid in the same year. So whatever rule is for tax payment, it's the same rule for tax savings. So you have, will show this in year one, this in two, in three, in four. Otherwise, you should show in the other years, which means for one, you should have used two, for two, three, for three, four, and four, four, five. But in the question, it mentioned that same year, so it's similar, one, two, three, four, right? So let's link the figures. And after that, it's all done. Just be patient here. It will not take much time then. And you will get the answers very, very fast. Here you have the figures. So, in front of you, I hope this is clear. Now the net cash flows. Let's apply the formula. Let's use the sum formula. Taxable cash flows from where I'll start minus tax payments, add tax savings. And this is the figure. Control C, Control V. Copy paste. Right. Okay. The last one is simple. No issues here as well. Now, discount factor. You are using nominal method, right? So, which, which rate should we use? So, it says for nominal, we should use nominal rate. Nominal rate. Okay? Nominal rate. So, do we have nominal rate in the question? Yes, we do have. It's the 12% rate, 12% rate. Got it everyone? Now, see how I'll make this easy for you again. 12%, right? Don't have to go to that formula sheet to look at the discount rates. See, I'll input a formula is equals to one divided by 1.12 power and connect this with year zero. See, automatically you people can work out the discount rates. One divided by 1.12 power 
0. Just copy this through control C and paste this control V. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Let's work out the NPV. Multiply discount rate with the cash flow. Control C, Control V. Just copy this. It's all the game of spreadsheet. Just paste Control V and you're done. So the NPV answer, the final answer, what to do is equals to just use the sum formula, open the bracket, select all these values. Have a good look at the formula and the magic done. And what is the nutshell here? I did use formula just for one year and the rest is all copy paste. So the answer is in front of you, but so many numbers, I'm frustrated with the numbers and the decimals, right? So let's make this easy to see, easy to watch, pleasant to watch. So what I'll do, see, the magic. I'll select all the numbers, all the numbers, right? And I have a very good option in the testing platform is the one that I'm using here, this one. The tenth option, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth. Which one? Tenth option. And see the magic. Wow. What happened? Yeah, I just need to open the cells here. Brackets. Figures are in brackets, negative figures are in brackets, okay? And positive figures, obviously the same. Commas have been added, okay? Commas have been added here. So you can easily figure out that how I have been able to manage this in front of you and things are pretty much simple and clear. So see, nice sound to watch. The similar thing I can do here as well. Okay. No more decimals issues. Rounded off. The tenth option I'm talking about. If you want to show these to three decimal places, you can do this as well. You go to this option of here, this one. Go to custom. Select the number and just select three decimal places. Now this is the exact testing platform that is available in your exam as well, okay? Apply and see. Everything neat and clean, nice to watch, good to watch, okay? And this is the NPV answer. So done with this first part, very easily, nicely, Saved a lot of time if you, if you want to make it more simple, clear for the examiner. So maybe it all depends on the time you have. Just select the format option. Just go to cell. Just go to borders. And just use the outlines. That all depends if you have time. But it is not compulsory, okay? And wow. Make the references in red if you want to. Again, it's, it's not compulsory. To differentiate, right? So this is the answer. You can see, good, easy. What's your feedback? Happy, everyone? Is this easy, clear? Yes or no? What's your feedback? Understood the easy method. Great. Now, now the marking scheme. This was for eight marks. So let me tell you the marking scheme. The marks distribution, okay? Now, 
one mark for sales. Now learn to get the easy marks. You should know the marking scheme. One for sales, one for variable cost, one for fixed cost. So three marks out of eight you can take very quickly by these three figures. Tax liability, one mark. Now out of eight, if you are not able to complete the question, if you're short of time in the paper. So four marks you can grip, get by doing four calculations. Yes, and you will get these four marks even if you haven't completed the question. You, you will pass in this part out of eight, okay? Then the tax benefits will give you one mark. Okay, let me just make this all red for you so that you know that this is the mark yeah, right? Five marks. One mark I'm adding here for the tax timings that you had to show the tax in the same year. So one mark for the tax timing here. Okay, so let's add that in both 1.5 here for the timing and 1.5 here for the timing as well. Okay, after this, you are getting one mark for the present values and the final answer, right? So, this is how the marking scheme will be given in the paper and I am sure you all are clear that how I worked out this entire answer, just one more thing. Uh, I just need to add here that uh, for tax savings, it's 2.5 just because you get more marks in tax saving calculation. And this is the marking scheme. So the point I want to make here is that understand the easy marks, the availability of easy marks. So if you grip quickly, the easy marks by doing revenue, variable fixed cost calculation, maybe capital allowance, tax savings, you are done with almost half of the question. I hope this is clear to all of you.